Welcome back to another episode of Sally Speed Shop. And tonight I'm in my dad's basement and I feel like the roles are a little reversed here. I feel like the parent that's supposed to be proud of their kid for their diorama that they got ready for a <laughs> science fair project. He's created this contraption that obviously has eight spark plugs, a coil, and a distributor. And I think the goal is to explain with this visual aid exactly how impressive what a distributor is doing and just how it works in general. Well, that's part of it. Initially, I kind of got the idea from working on the, the Mustang, getting it running, and I think we had a bad coil or a couple bad coils. You know, oftentimes you're like, we got bad points, we got bad coils, we we don't know what we have that's working or not, and it's always a hassle working on, on, it, on the car, and I thought, hey, wouldn't it be cool to have a little test bed to actually test something out? And so that was one part of it. The other part of it was just what the distributor actually does. It's pretty remarkable. The numbers that these things put out are just crazy. And with an old school distributor, this Wait, is- Wait, and you're the, talking how many cycles this thing does how, as you're driving down the road. Yes. So when he said the numbers that this thing puts out, he's talking about literally for every so far you drive or however long it's running, just how many times those points are opening and closing. Yes. Say for instance, you're driving your car down the highway, 2,500 RPMs, which that's not an unreasonable number for a car back in the day that didn't have overdrive. So that means your distributor is spinning half of that. So it's 1,250 RPMs, rotations per minute. And on an eight cylinder, that means it's firing eight times 1,250. So that means it's doing 10,000 sparks per minute. And that means you're doing 600,000 sparks per hour. If you drive your car 5,000 miles, your coil has fired 50 million times. Yeah, those are big numbers. And what we're talking about is when you're driving, those points down there, you see the little spark, are opening and closing. We're actually going the wrong way with a Ford. But oh, well, yeah. that's still doing the same thing. Are any little, of the plugs firing? You got a little spark leak somewhere. Well, they are firing. They're just really dim. Let's turn off the light. Not all we're of them losing, are firing. We're losing fire somewhere. It's coming Maybe out here. Not in all the way. Let's see if I can shock myself. But this thing is opening and closing. Say, and this is this is why you used to have to have a tune-up because these points are a mechanical device versus electronic ignition where it's firing due to a photo sensor or a magnetic sensor so that you don't have wear over time. But on a car back in the day, you'd have to bring it in and change your points or adjust your points. It was a regular thing that was done. So that is the points actually opening and closing right there, which as this spins, there's a little cam that the points ride on. And so when he's referring to that opening and closing, that is what he is talking about happening over and over and over again on the scale that we are describing. Yep. Here's uh, a very simple illustration of what's happening if you were only firing like a lawnmower or a motorcycle, a one cylinder. You have your coil and you have your points. It's firing once every other revolution if it's a four cycle engine. Um, and then if you want to get a little more complicated, you've got the distributor in the mix to where not only is it opening and closing the points at the specific time, but it's also sending the fire to the specific cylinder. And that's all timed by your timing chain and your cam, and that makes it all work. But simplest form, complicated, and then a V8. Yeah, obviously V8. So let me lay out what we have here. So obviously each of these spark plugs represents each individual cylinder. You have your coil itself, which is hooked to the battery down here for power. You have a drill that is running the distributor, which would obviously be spinning off of a gear off the camshaft. So that's why your distributor spins at half the speed of your crankshaft is because the camshaft spins at half the speed of the crankshaft. Correct. And so he's got all this laid out like what you'd have in an engine, but just on an old router table. And that way you can actually visualize what's happening. Hey, I just realized why we had fire jumping. Why? 
Because it had nowhere to go. The distributor oh. cap is off. Yeah, that's fair. What's crazy is these were still sparking very lightly. Interesting. Which I don't really understand well, how. We'll see some spark now. So you saw the distributor spinning. That's what ha what is happening. When you crank your engine, this starts spinning and it's telling which spark plug to fire at the specific time. After the cylinder has compressed the gas, it fires and throws that cylinder down and that's how you get power. Wheeze, so, cough, bang, blow, right? Uh, it sucks, squeeze, suck, squeeze, bang, bang blow. blow. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Did you say wheeze? wheeze. <laughs> That's if it's not running right. Then it's wheezing. Wheeze ain't doing it that way. <laughs> yep. Oh, another thing. I think what it was doing, it was arcing from the coil to this metal plate, yeah, and then arcing through all of them. All right, now we should see it firing. It's pretty remarkable, actually. Yeah. So you see down here, you can see all the spark plugs firing in sequence. Let's turn off the light. Oh, it's so much better. <laughs> but that little spark is enough to fire the gas. With your high energy ignition, with electronic ignition, it's a bigger spark. So you get better, better lighting. Let's spin it up. They're more constant at that point. And all that is happening because those points are opening and closing fast enough to fire all eight of these at this pace. Yeah. Those little points are just like And you think about that for like 5,000 miles or 100,000 miles. You know, it's, of course you replace the points, but it's pretty fascinating. I know Jake called this a little science project or whatever. It it's like a diorama that you see at a science fair. And he needs the looks... trifold board behind it that he's pointing <laughs> at. And I need to come up and give him a gold star. And I'm, oh man, I'm so proud of you, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> the roles are very reversed here. It's weird. Yeah, they say when you get older, the roles reverse. So <laughs> I'm starting early. <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty fascinating. So another thing that happens with a distributor that you don't maybe know about is something called uh, centrifugal advance. So down underneath here, on GMs it's a little different, they're up top, but on this Ford, this is off actually a 65 Mustang. Um, yeah, it's on, parked over there. Which is, never mind the basement, it's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so... Uh, as this thing spins up, the weights spin out, and that advances your timing because as your motor gets going faster, it needs the spark to fire earlier so that it's firing at the most efficient time. And so then another thing that happens is your vacuum advance, and that's what this is here. When your motor is trying to crank, it doesn't have any vacuum, and it's firing a little later. Then after your motor starts, you get vacuum, and it and it pulls this little rod here, it pulls this and it shifts this whole plate so it changes your timing. Well, if you're too far advanced when you're trying to start, it'll be hard to turn the motor over because it's firing before top dead center. So yeah. your vacuum advance keeps you from having too much timing during startup and increases the timing upon idle, but then at wide open throttle or you have way less vacuum. So then you rely on the centrifugal advance. Yep. So, and so it's interesting how it all works. This is a very complicated thing. It really is. Uh, people take it for granted. Another thing to know about your vacuum advance is if you don't know which direction your distributor spins, what you can do is put your hand in line with the vacuum advance, turn your fingers, that's the way your distributor is going to spin. So Ford spin backwards from GM. This is a counterclockwise one. And... Uh, we didn't know that when we were first trying to get this thing running. Well, but we're we, trying to prime the oil and it wouldn't prime. Yeah, we figured it out, but that's that's the trick. Just put your hand in line with the vacuum advance, turn your fingers, and that's the direction it goes. Can we actuate the vacuum advance? Well, it's... Are you going to get shocked? I mean, if, if I, like, got a vacuum hose and... Do you have a piece of vacuum hose? referring to his shelf of random things. Yeah, we're not going to show the shelf. <laughs> no, I think it's pretty interesting, actually. I thought I had it. I mean, it's interesting to the point where there is a clown mask up here. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Wiley is very interesting. Uh, it's just Which you can I, meet Wiley, it's just the new pup <laughs> that showed up. He wants to eat the clown mask. The clown <laughs> mask, it's just what I do in my spare time. 
No, really, this basement was, was when I bought this house, this basement had all kinds of stuff left in it, and the clown mask was here. It wasn't, that wasn't me. Likely my, story. My name is not John Wayne Gacy, <laughs> if you know who that is. All right, so you want to see the vacuum move? Oh, yeah, you can see it moving in there. Yep. Yeah. Once you release it, you really get to watch it pop back. So what's that? What I explained is that's increasing your timing at idle. It's advancing your timing at idle. So that way, when you start it, you don't have to have all that timing in it. Yes. Yeah, and I think it's mainly for startup. Yep. I think um, it absolutely once it cranks, is. you get vacuum, and it compensates for the engine running. So the other thing on this one. Back in the day, if we spin around to this side, there's a little oil port. You know, they didn't have all these self-lubricated bearings that you could never lubricate, uh, put oil in. You can just shoot a little oil down in there and lubricate your distributor. Thanks, Ford. Yeah, I've heard a little thing where times have changed so much that you used to be able to look at your owner's manual and it would tell you how to adjust your valves, and now it tells you not to drink the antifreeze. So we've gone a little downhill. Things used to be very serviceable. Now people just want them to work and never break. And uh, they're a lot harder to work on as a result. So people seeing a little oil port is really cool, actually. Yeah, people used to have common sense. Now you got to tell them not to drink the antifreeze. Well, they shouldn't call it common sense anymore. It because be it's Uncommon not. sense. Yes. Anyway, so that's, that's it. That's an yeah. explanation of how a distributor works. This is a cool little and, setup, honestly. You know... We can also check a coil or check points if we ever want to. I think you would have won a blue ribbon at the science fair if this was set up. I think so. It's honestly pretty cool. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm a bit of a nerd, so I've always actually kind of liked science fairs. And this yeah. is like a little science fair in my dad's basement. So this, this table is actually a router table that was left down here by my stepdad when I bought this house. And it fit perfectly. The, the distributor fit down in there. I did have to drill this hole a little bit bigger for the hold down and the, and the ground. Um, normally, this would be grounded on your engine, but I had to run a ground wire. But... Yeah, it worked out great to be able to illustrate this. And and really, it's fascinating. Uh, now, with modern cars, you don't have any of this. You have, I mean, you... It's all cars, electronic. It's okay. use, it uses Halifax sensors that are coil, magnetic. And, coil packs. And crank and, triggers and cam right, sensors. Right. So, the way that they used to do it, and they did it for, I don't know, 100 years? Pretty... Uh, Almost 100 time, years, yeah. the distributor existed. Yeah, a long time. Obviously, it got upgraded with you know, modern sensors and stuff compared to having points, but the distributor was still in use and might still be in use well, in some vehicles. I got a 2001 Civic exactly, that has a distributor yeah. on it. That's not that long Up ago. until the 2000s and cars, you know, the first prototypes of cars were like 18, like yeah. 1890s, 1900s, like 190 something. Yeah, the distributor lasted a long time. So it's and, pretty impressive technology yeah. for as Simple as we think it is, it is very complex. It really is. There's, there's a lot going on that we just take for granted. Yeah, and I know uh, Luke Finley knows more about distributors than most people. And if you ever want to learn about timing your vehicle and getting everything perfect, go check out Thunderhead 289. He will break down exactly what's going on in these things and in your carburetor on another oh, level. Yes, definitely. So another thing uh, I didn't mention, they call these things, a nickname for these things is dizzies. Yep. Obviously because they're spinning around, but it's short for distributor, I guess. But because they spin so much, you know, you'd get dizzy too if you That's spun. a good way to describe it. Yeah. So, yeah. That's it. I don't know if that was informative or educational or interesting to you in any way, shape, or form, but... I think they're fascinating, and it's really hard to picture what's going on in them when they're in an engine, because you can't look at them like you can when it's on this little test stand. And uh, I always like those distributor testers. I've never played with one, so this is kind of that setup. Yeah. But, you know, just the poor man's version. And hopefully I get a good grade on my science project. Yeah, I think he gets a blue ribbon. <laughs> but uh, anyway, as always, thanks to all of you guys for watching. I hope you found it at least moderately interesting. Um, I'm sure my dad will overlay some interesting graphics and stuff throughout the video. So hopefully you enjoyed those as well. Tell him good job, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Please remember to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you see the future videos. We appreciate each and every one of yes. you. 
and we'll see you along the way. For more riveting content. <laughs> yeah, very riveting. <laughs>